Hey everybody, this is Birch. Um, I went to see Avatar 2, Way of Water. I uh, took uh, wife and kids to that. Um, I knew it was long. I, I guess uh, I, I'd heard and hadn't uh, digested that it was uh, three hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> so uh, it, was, it, was, it was long. Um, the, the problem that I had with the film, um, and, and yes, this is a video about comics, I promise. But the problem I have with the film is that you, you, could, you, you, you knew what was going to happen pretty early on in the movie. At least I did. I, I'm like, okay, well, you know, the, it's, it's kind of a classic story. It's like, okay, they're on the run. They've reincarnated the guy. Well, spoilers. Spoilers for Avatar. Okay. They've reincarnated the army general guy who's going to chase around him like kind of like a cartoon villain here. And, um, you know, the family's going to go on a run and they're going to have to explore new parts of Avatar and there's going to be a new tribe and the new tribe will be wary of them and they won't accept them because they have different customs and different ways. But you know, they'll, they'll figure out a way to earn their spot there. And then we've got a, you know, an older son that's very responsible and a younger son that's not. And the older son's definitely going to die protecting the younger son. And, you know, it, it's just, it, it, that, that movie would, that, that movie was not, uh, at all, um, surprising. Um, now it was beautiful. It looked good. Uh, definitely, you know, some, some good graphics, you know, you, you have at times your mind can wander a little bit and you start to kind of wonder, you're like, wait a minute, are these, all these female avatar characters naked here? They run around kind of topless and everything. Hmm. You know, it, but, but whatever, you know, <laughs> just these are the things, the little things you think about. I'm a man of culture. What can I say? Uh, but, uh, but it, you know, it was, it was not a movie that tried to, I mean, it, it, I, I, I have to imagine that the filmmakers were not sitting there going, nobody will expect this. They knew that the plot and a lot of story elements and the things they were doing were pretty, I don't, not tired, but just, just pretty tried and true, right? They, they, they knew that, you know, the ideas and the story that they were putting out was not groundbreaking. Uh, there was not, I mean, even down to, you know, they have the main villain, they can't kill the main villain, they create a kind of a sub-villain who's just kind of an immoral, you know, whale hunter type person, and they, they're like, see all the ways, see, we're going to kill this massive big creature for this tiny little, little fluid of stuff that, you know, keeps people from aging. I guess uh, they, you know, they didn't want to have to, what was the, the original mineral in the first Avatar, like unobtainium? Or it was something like that, like super special anium. It was it was like a it was a stupid stupid name, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the movie is making uh, has made over a billion dollars. It's absolutely just just you know, just dominating. They're going to do more Avatar movies. They they you know that's been the intention for a while. It was just it took a long time to get from you know Avatar one to the one we just saw Avatar two, but they'll speed up now and they're gonna cram out a avatar three and a four and the movie ends on a bit of a you know a, a bit of a cliffhanger in the sense that you know the the hero knows that the villains are going to come for him again but he's going to make a stand he's ready you know they're they're not going to be they're not going to take no shit no more uh basically so we can look forward to future conflicts uh, but it the, the the part that struck me as i was thinking about this this movie that i'd just seen on the way home is that we hear a lot in comics, one of the most common kind of interview tropes, things you hear from creators, things that you hear from the publisher is that, you know, we wanted to do something different. We wanted to defy expectations. We wanted to, uh, we didn't want to give people the same old thing. You know, it's, it's, uh, we really needed to do something new is what the, uh, the creators say. Uh, the creators also say things like, Hey, I, I, you know, I lost my job and I need money. Please give me uh, please, please fund my GoFundMe. And what strikes me is, is um, so, okay, so is, is James Cameron just a pathetic hack? Is that, is that what, is James Cameron, does he, is he just, is he not a filmmaker to be respected? Is, uh, you know, the writer of this film, is, uh, is this just schlock? Is this just, you know, stupid, pathetic, uh, bullshit kind of writing? in Avatar, because it's, it's not, you know, it didn't defy any expectations. It didn't uh, surprise it, you know, the, what the people wanted walking into this movie was to see a bunch of, you know, CGI Avatar characters fighting each other and some crazy creatures and, you know, big action stunts. And the film gave it, gave it three hours of that. It delivered. 
so, uh, you know, what are we supposed to take away from that? Are we supposed to take away from that, that, um, that the, uh, that the, you know, the people involved in it are untalented? Why is it that we have to hear interviews with, you know, various people telling us that, you know, the only, uh, the, the, the way to be successful in comics, and I've, I've heard now, I've been paying attention to some of these comic classes that people put on, and they'll say things like, like that. They'll give the advice of, you need to, uh, you need to defy, you know, you, you need, you can't just give somebody the same old thing. You can't just give somebody a, uh, a basic story. You have to, you have to do something new. You have to do something unexpected. So how does that advice um, mesh with what just with what's happening with Avatar Two here? Um, you know, I look. I, I think that it's fair and completely fine if you want to have a pet project where you do kind of your experimental, your crazy idea, your thing. But every now and then, don't you think you should probably, uh, for you know, for the purposes of your bank account, shouldn't you put out some? very crowd pleasing fan servicey shock. And don't you think that probably would be a good idea? Put it this way. Are you having trouble affording dental care? If so, why not do a story uh, where Spider-Man is just, uh, has to swing around and, and uh, defeat, you know, Dr. Octopus and, you know, and, and, and it's a crowd pleasing kind of story. Why not do that story? It seems like that would be a good idea. Every now and then. Again, you're an artiste, so you need to make sure you tell stories that you know, speak to your particular kind of storytelling muse. And I'm not even saying that sarcastically. It may probably sound that way. But I mean it. You, know, I, you need to do things that creatively inspire you. Absolutely. But you know, every now and then, uh, doing a job where you, you just... Uh, you take the money, you deliver something that is foundational, deliver something that is, uh, because here's the thing. Uh, I would say, if some people ask me, well, what did you think of Avatar? And then I, I listed the thing, like, well, it's pretty predictable. I mean, you know, you could tell this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and all the rest. I'm like, oh, so you didn't like it? I'm like, no, actually, it was good. Because it was good. That film was long, but it was good. It was, it was enjoyable, it was done well. The You know, it, it looked very pretty, It. You know, the characters, even though the plots and the stories and the various things that our characters are going through were super obvious, super predictable, um, it was still good. It still did the job. It, it, you know, it, it <laughs> I, I mean, it, it, you watched it and it's like, okay, they delivered to me what I was expecting and more or less what I could predict and they did it well. So I'm happy. You know, I didn't walk out of the theater going, ah, I was wasted a lot of money. I, I walked out of the theater going, man, that was a long ass movie. That's, <laughs> that's what I, that's why I walked out of the theater. But I mean, that, that's, that's how it felt. It felt like I went in, I watched a movie. The movie was, uh, you know, it, 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 it didn't break ground. Um, it, it delivered what it said it was going to deliver. And then it was over. And it's, it promised me more. If you come back again in a couple of years, we'll give you more things that, uh, <laughs> that you want. Um, you know, is anybody, are people going to hold up Avatar as one of the best movies of all time? Of course not. Uh, Avatar 2, it's not, I mean, it, it's highly unlikely that movie uh, wins, uh, you know, best picture of the year, unless uh, people at Hollywood decide that that film is a really good analogy for the climate crisis and, there wasn't a lot of crime and crisis kind of stuff in here. It was more, if you're, if we're looking at the social issues, it was paralleling. It was, uh, you know, whaling and, you know, taking indigenous people's lands, probably those two things. Uh, family, that's, that family is not a popular topic in Hollywood. But anyway, it, it, it it's not, it is, it, in, in no way is this film a cinematic storytelling masterpiece. But it was good. And it's popular and it's making a lot of money. And so, you know, it, it doesn't mean that, you know, Ryan Johnson can't make more knives out films that, that subvert expectations. I, I don't know that it did, by the way, people say that a lot that uh, it's like, well, you know, knives out, uh, knives out subverted expectations. And that was okay because it was, you know, it didn't have a lore to build on that, that last Jedi did. Okay. I mean, 
you know, I understand the point. The Last Jedi has an established uh, history behind it, and so screwing around with it is uh, is a bad idea. Totally get that. Totally, I agree. By the way, I agree. Once you have a franchise and kind of a storytelling model, you you need to like Avatar, keep delivering it. You know, if Avatar two had opened with, you know, in the first ten seconds, the dad dies, and then they uh, they reveal that you know the avatars are actually robots and not. You know, not not the avatars themselves, but the the indigenous creatures, the Navi or whatever, that they're actually uh, robots built by humans, and their um, they, their programming was that they would mine the land and cultivate it so humans could. And so everything you thought you knew was wrong. That movie would not have done as well. The movie would have done terrible. Um, you know, I don't think that. Uh, but the point I was I actually I wandered away from it. The point I was about to make was. I don't think Knives Out by Ryan Johnson subverted expectations nearly as much as people say. They, they, they're trying to defend this storytelling choice. But, you know, I thought Knives Out was a good movie. I don't think it subverted expectations. It was a classic kind of mystery whodunit. And they've, this, this plot has been done before, too. The idea that, hey, the person who actually did it was, uh, was not, uh, you know, was, the, it was, was somebody you kind of want to root for. And it was kind of an accident. Like, you know, fine. Um. I think that Avatar gives gives a bit of a lesson to comics, and that lesson is uh, there's nothing shameful about delivering a a movie or a story that meets the expectations of their audience. I think that that it's perfectly healthy. It's perfectly fine. It's good for the industry. It's good for you as a creator to to make that money and just deliver something strong and foundational. A lot of the classic comic stories that we remember and talk about today are that they delivered good, strong foundational stories. They didn't try and upend the universe in order to uh, trick or con the audience into thinking they're getting something different. So it's, it's all right. Again, it's not all about money. Whenever I do these videos, somebody comes in and it's like, Oh, it's not all about money. Perch. I, I get it. But you know, when a creator is saying I can't afford dental care, I can't afford rent. I can't afford food then every now and then make it about the money every now and then. And, and, and for what it's worth, as I mentioned, um, you know, going to see avatar two, I didn't feel like I was ripped off. I felt like, uh, you know, it's still three hours, still too long, but I felt like I got the entertainment I wanted. That's what it's all about, right? Thanks for listening.